Well, I wish you well as we gather together once again and grateful that you have come our way. And so I uh, want to begin uh, with a word of prayer tonight. Holy Father, we just invite you into this space. We invite you into this time. And Father, we just pray that you bless the reading of your word in just a short while and that uh, you just bless our church family, Father. Bless those that are interested in what we are doing. And Father, just please help us uh, to remember that no matter what we endure in life, uh, that you are still on the throne and that you love us. And that one reason that there is uh, disappointment in this life, that there is pain and suffering, is simply because this world is not the one that you intended for us. And so, Father, help us to be mindful of that reality. Help us keep that reality at the forefront of our understanding and our thinking in our relationship with you. That you ultimately have something in store for us for all eternity that is far, far greater than any joy we can experience on this side of glory. Father, we thank you above all else for the gift of a Savior. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray this prayer. Amen. Well, I invite you to turn to John chapter 15. That's where we're going to spend a little time this evening. And, uh, and so, John chapter 15, we're going to look at the first handful of verses of that chapter. But... I remember when uh, in the early 90s, I guess it was 1992, that Stacy and I bought uh, uh, our first home together. And we were living in Kentucky, and uh, the previous owners uh, had some monkey grass uh, out in the yard. And I guess it was uh, maybe uh, along one of the flower beds or something like that. Uh, that's been, you know, that, that's been about 30 years ago, so I can't remember exactly where the monkey grass was in relation to our house. I just remember that we had a neighbor who said, you know, uh, in the following spring, because we, we, we took possession of the home uh, right after Thanksgiving. I think we closed on it in September of 92 and moved in in November of that year. And, uh, and so the, the yard wasn't uh, an issue at that point, but come next April... Then we had to buy uh, our first mower and uh, had to start thinking about uh, flower beds and, and landscaping and things like that. And so there was some monkey grass. And if you know what monkey grass is, it's that, it's that sort of decorative grass and the, the blades of the grass are kind of have stripes on them uh, outside of our church building here at the Hohenwald Church of Christ. We used to have monkey grass lining each side of uh, the sidewalk here. Uh, on the, the Second Avenue entrance. But nonetheless, uh, monkey grass is one of those things that a na neighbor had to explain this to me. He said, you know, you really need to take your, I think weed whacker is what she called it, but yeah, take your weed eater and trim that down. You had to trim it down to, and, I, and so I did. I fired that thing up and, and trimmed it down to nothing, just whacked it almost level with the ground, and then sure enough, within a couple of weeks, it was really growing out, and within a couple of weeks after that, uh, you had uh, a nice little stand of monkey grass, and it looked as good as ever, but it would have never looked that good if it hadn't been pruned, pruned back. And, uh, and so if we look at John chapter 15, uh, just the first two verses here, uh, Jesus is saying, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Now, I remember uh, noticing a couple of years ago a house across the street from Progress Drive there off Summertown Highway where Stacy and I, uh, I walk and she runs, but uh, there's a prominent, uh, well-known member of our community that lives across the street, and he has a lot of mature uh, shade trees lining 
either side of his, of his front driveway. And I remember noticing that there was a, a crew out there in a bucket truck, and they were trimming those trees back. And I mean, they cut them way back. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, that just looks awful. You know, you have those nice, big, mature trees, and every time somebody cuts down a tree, uh, I just think, oh no, because I one of the things I appreciate are mature shade trees. And so uh, he had several of them, and they, they cut them back to look, you know, as I would say, cut them back to nothing. And so I just thought, man, why do they do that? That's going to look awful. Well, shows how much I know, or in this case, don't know, right? Because sure enough, the next spring and summer, out there walking again, I noticed how quickly those trees rebounded. And they looked great. And by the next summer after that, you could have not even imagined that they had been cut back. Because they looked, even just had a really nice shape, and uh, just looked better than ever. And so, uh, you know, all gardeners know that if they cut back and prune plants well, that they're going to produce even more fruit in time. Or as the examples I've given, monkey grass and, and shade trees don't necessarily bear fruit, but then they, they look fuller and healthier. And you can tell that by being pruned back that they are at their best. But it's the same with us, church family. It, it's truly the same with us that the pain, the sorrow, the sickness, the suffering, the failure, the disappointment, uh, ambition in life that is unrealized, it all hurts. It really does. Uh, whether it's something that's happened to you or something that you thought would happen that, that never came to fruition, it, it all hurts on some level. And we read in continuing on in John, Jesus talking to his closest followers, picking up with verse 3, You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Um, some of the most powerful ways that God shapes us and enriches our lives comes in the aftermath of this kind of pruning. There are times that we hurt. Uh, years ago, and this is probably going back about... Uh, 12, 15 years, but I remember seeing a skit called God's Chisel. And uh, if you're familiar, anybody that's ever been to Winterfest, uh, it's probably familiar with the skit guys, but you can actually, you can go to YouTube. Some of you are watching this on YouTube, and so you can, you can look in the search browser of YouTube and type in skit guys, God's Chisel. And you can watch what I think is a fantastic skit on this same subject. And it's, uh, it's about somebody uh, taking a chisel and uh, imagine that, that you are a sculpture. And someone is taking a chisel to you and taking pieces off of you. And it does hurt at the time. But in the aftermath then, you are exactly what God needs you to be. And, uh, and that you end up being someone uh, who is able to bear the kind of fruit uh, that God's kingdom needs you to bear. And so I wish you well in the days ahead, and I encourage you that when, when life is disappointing, when life hurts, because we all 
no hurt. We all know suffering. We all know loss. We all know disappointment. But uh, with God's help, we can come out on the other side of that with a testimony that says, look what God brought me through. And we can be people who tell others that our God in this world that He never intended for us in the first place. That yet He is faithful and He is near and He brings us through the trials of this life. Oh, won't it be grand when we spend an eternity with Him and uh, He is the light of our world and, and we never have to worry about pain and tears and suffering and disappointment again. But until then, uh, we should be followers. We should be disciples who understand that apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ, we can do nothing and that we need to remain in Him. And then He will certainly remain in us and carry us through the trials of life. God bless each of you in the days ahead. Goodbye.